Are you interested how the old 8-bit computers were? If yes, join me for this video. Hi, I'm Feshko and in this video I'll talk about the TTL ICs, so the main building blocks of the old 8-bit computers. It will be a bit more technical than usual, but still it takes several semesters on university, so I'm not able to go really into the details. But I plan to extend this video later on with two more. Our computers are digital computers. Before those, there were analog computers as well, where pressure or electricity were used. And then it was, let's say, the output was measured and the user could read this analog signal. But right now we are using digital computers. So we have one as true and zero as false, so two levels. These are represented by voltage. So there is an upper and a lower voltage and there is in between a barrier, which is undefined. This is not representing any kind of value. When we are talking about 8-bit computers, 8-bit means one byte. Of course, there were computers with 10 bits or whatsoever, but it is not relevant now. What can we do with a byte or bits? First of all, we have mathematical functions, so we can add or subtract. And beside them, there are the logical operations. So if we have A and B, so two bits, then we can set AND operation, which means if both of them are true, so one, we are getting on the output true. If any of those are zero, then we are getting zero. The other base operation is OR. It is true in case at least one of the inputs are true. And the third one is the NOT operation, where we are negating the bit. So it is making false to true, and true to false. It is possible to build such logic from diodes and transistors. So we can build a simple OR with two diodes. And if we add the transistor, then it is becoming a NOR, so an inverting OR. It is paired with the NAND, which is the NOT AND. And they are really important because with NAND or NOR, with any of those, it is possible theoretically to build any kind of logical network. But our 8-bit computers use the TTL logic, so TTL ICs. Let me cheat and show you from the catalog what is inside the NAND IC. This TTL series, so the 74 series, is used by the early 8-bit computers, as I already mentioned. But this series also evolved, so there are several variants. Why do we need those? Uh, the answer is quite simple. There are the standards, so the basic, but the new ones has different attributes. It is easy to distinguish those because there is the original 7400 and there is the low power short key. This is the 74LS00 and there is, for example, the short key, what you can see here. This is the fastest, but this one is consuming more power. If you're interested what kind of uh, parts are available, I recommend to check out the data sheets. For example, on Wikipedia, you can find a list where you can find the part numbers, the descriptions, as well as a link to the data sheets. You may ask, why do I recommend the data sheet? Simply because it contains all the relevant information, for example, the packaging, where you can find the pins and inputs, outputs whatsoever but the electrical characteristics are also important. So here you can find, for example, the current which a gate requires to be driven and the current it can output. Why is it important? Because a gate can drive just a given amount of other gates. It is also important how fast is the given gate. So there is a switching time. This is here it's, uh, in nanosecond. So it means there is a delay between the input and the output. If we have a single gate, let's say it is just 10 nanosecond, but if we have more, it is adding up three gates, which means 30 nanoseconds. And this delay can cause problem. The easiest way if I draw a diagram and you will see why. So the NAND gate has two inputs and what is getting the A directly? The other one is the inverted A, but it is going through those three gates. So there is a delay of 30 nanoseconds. If you remember how the NAND gate works, then it is easy to draw that we will have a spike here. This is called hazard, which can be eliminated. If you are using some kind of design software, it is taking care. It can be eliminated manually as well, but I don't go into more details. So what can be the solution? 
The solution is very simple. Use something which is sampling the output of the previous network, logical network, and store it for the next change. We can synchronize this sample to your clock source. As you can see here, here the clock is active high, and there is the truth table. So it is simply sampling the input and storing for the output when the clock is going up. Because we are using this synchronous signal, this is a synchronous logical network. And what I talked about previously, it's asynchronous because there is no synchronous signal. I think that's enough for today. Let me sum it up. The first 8-bit computers were based on 7400 TTL series. With the base integrated circuits, we can build asynchronous networks, but those have a problem which is called hazard. This is caused by the delay which is introduced by each gate and it can be eliminated if we switch over to synchronous or at least partially synchronous logical networks. What does it mean synchronous? It means we are using some kind of synchronous signal, so a clock source, where we use the edge of the clock signal to sample the output of the previous logical network and store it for the output. If you enjoyed this video, join me for the next one. There I will talk about ROMs, RAMs and a little bit of the CPU how they operate together. Goodbye.